Luxury brand Golden Goose is doubling down on control of its supply chain with the purchase of its top supplier. This as it looks to boost its $227 million in sales from the first half of the year. Golden Goose CEO Silvio Campara joins us now alongside Yahoo Finance's Brooke De Palma. Silvio, uh, good to see you here. Help us understand the, the, I would say, infatuation with your brand. What drives that? First of all, thank you so much for being here for a former small company from Venice. Uh, it's a big achievement. It's always nice for me when I can represent all my people and uh, trying to explain, you know, the magic behind uh, our, I would say, you know, special story. Uh, and this is probably part of uh, the magic, no? And the miracle that you were talking about. Uh, people perceive that and the magic is really to be able to put in our product uh, what then the people perceive as something special because for people it's all about special today. It's not about how much, how much or how much expensive is a product. And speaking of that allure among consumers, right now you're in LA for a Golden Goose event. You're gonna have content creators there. We've seen the likes of Taylor Swift and Reese Witherspoon wear Golden Goose sneakers. How important has it been for influencers like those to wear your brand and ultimately drive to your success? It's a great question and uh, I have a, a simple answer. Uh, what's magical is that we never place this product to these celebrities because Golden Goose is made it is made in order to make everyone feel special. So the fact that every shoe is made, every shoe is unique, uh, is making our customer becoming, you know, a lover. And the fact that this celebrity has been wearing this has been just a great amplifier to a message that is simple and is not limited just for uh, a small community while it's really open to a wider community. What are we seeing in the style trends right now? I mean, for Kanye West and Gap, it's been about some of the kind of more, I won't say basic or kind of dirty looks out there, but there is something that's out there to like making things look lived in already, even before they sell. What is it with the trends right now that you're seeing? How much do you expect to kind of be able to lean further into that and, and where the customer is actually continuing to take price despite, hey, looks like your shoe has a scuff on it. What what's up with that? Thank you, Brian, for this question, because uh, this is technically the first time that I'm answering to this question live uh, to someone. Uh, and it has been, you know, quite a question for a couple of years, because you should remember that Golden Goose has been the first brand ever to distress pair of sneakers. And at the beginning, people were a little bit like skeptical. Why? Uh, like, why do I have to spend 500 bucks, you know, for a pair of dirty shoes? While they, it, it was part of the magic again, Golden Goose never wanted to promote the product top down. We always want you know the people to talk about our product. So there was a space of uh, an, an undefined space where the people were not really getting about that. But the, the reality is that simply what we try to do is to uh, in injecting life to our product is to unleash uh, the sense of uniqueness of every product we uh, offer to our uh, communities. And uh, it's a little bit like you know your old device. Uh, it is always the most special because you really take in with it. Uh, your memories, no? So every item that keep with you uh, and keep with it, you know, its memories is then more special than something just because it's more expensive, you know? So there's a new notion of going from product to purpose, product to values rather than just a product. So this is what is going on right now in the industry. And uh, I think the example of Kanye is very interesting, quite far from Golden Goose because Kanye is still, you know, quite, fashion focus while Golden Goose is consumer obsessed. So this position Golden Goose in a very special um, angle of the industry. And speaking of just the long term goal of Golden Goose, you've been in this industry since 2000. You've been through three different uh, investment groups here. Latest Premier took a majority stake in Golden Goose. So I have to ask here, they're also the owners of, of Doc Martens, Valentino. Could we see Golden Goose go public in the near future? I mean, it's part, of course, you know, of uh, the options. And uh, but, but the most important to us, where we remain focused, are two things: first, creating value every day to our consumers; second, to stay flexible because the market outside is very complicated and very complex. And as you can imagine, you know, consumers is really one of uh, the first angles that the market and these difficulties and opportunities can uh, really reflect it on. So. Uh, it is very important in this process of education to stay flexible. 
Now, that's extremely important to bring up, especially in this conversation and especially in this timing right now. Uh, given your kind of consumer base that you go after, the, the more affluent consumer that is kind of flocking to the Golden Goose product, if you will, even with some of the anticipated recessionary concerns that many consumers have, are you seeing that show up in any of the sales figures and any of the relationship with that consumer right now? It's a great question. So as you can imagine, for sure, you know that almost 42, 44% of our business is uh, driven by Americas. And um, so, you know, I have a really special angle to be an Italian brand because no, really many Italian brands have the uh, lucky that Golden Goose has. And uh, I can tell you that on the Ameri from the American point of view, uh, we didn't see any recession. Uh, last year, we achieved uh, something around 78% plus versus 2020. And this year, we are in a zone of plus 40 uh, versus next year versus last year in uh, in America. And in general, the, the company, the first semester has been performing like incredibly good, you know, like plus 38. Why? Because again, uh, we don't really look at the trend in, uh, in fashion. We really look in trend in consumer. And uh, there's something that is for sure. The KPIs that consumers look at are not EBITDA, are no cash conversion, is no uh revenues but are really like mps customer acquisition is really the ability that a, that a company and a brand has to retain and compensate with these communities so this is where golden goose is really representing an excellence and i really think that uh, we are really representing a kind of new frontier for the consumer industry on this side Really fascinating. I've seen so many of your products on some of the high-end kind of fashion retailers and resellers out there as well. And so I'm excited to see where the brand goes from here. Golden Goose CEO Sylvia Kampar joining us here today. Thanks so much for the time, as well as Yahoo Finance's own Brooke De Palma.